Hello and welcome to this first video in the Industrial Revolution section of our year, and this is part one, the origins and features of this revolution. Now, the Industrial Revolution began in England and it spread to the rest of Western Europe and the United States. Uh, with the Industrial Revolution came an increased demand for raw materials from Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Advancements in technology produced the Industrial Revolution, while advancements in science and medicine altered the lives of people living in the new industrial cities, and cultural changes soon followed. All right, so here's where it started. I'm just going to point this out. In the United Kingdom, uh, this is where the Industrial Revolution started, the cradle of the Industrial Revolution, like it's a baby, started right here. And you can see why, because they've got uh, these industrial areas. They were located right over uh, places where you had access to the natural resources, like coal and iron, or you had lots of people living in close quarters so that you could uh, then create industrial uh, products. But why did it start in England? It had a relatively stable government compared to other places on the European scene, uh, but then it had a lot of really important natural resources like iron and coal and rivers that you could take boats on and transport stuff really easily, especially really heavy things like iron and coal. And they also had colonies with other natural resources, and those colonies could also buy up their finished goods. The enclosure movement, which we'll talk about in a second, but keep that in your brain, and the growing labor force because of the population explosion of this time period, and the invention of the steam engine. So this is the enclosure movement. Wealthy landowners took lands that used to be held by everyone in a village in common. So anyone who wanted to could graze their livestock there. But then the landowners took it by law and then they uh, fenced it off and made it just their own and decided exactly what they wanted to do with it. And it ruined many of the small farmers because they couldn't graze their livestock there anymore. Um, and because it pushed them off of their land, those large landowners then bought those people's land. Um, and all of the small farmers were pushed into the cities where then they worked in factories. So it did, when the large landowners consolidated all of their farms, it allowed them to produce food and wool much more easily and efficiently. So it did increase food and wool production. And here's the thing. Here's the areas in which uh, a lot of land was enclosed. So you can see these core uh, food and wool producing areas were then close to uh, London, uh, Birmingham, and uh, some of these other industrial later industrial cities, and that's because then those cities picked up the production, they grew their populations, and then they also used the wool to make clothes and then sell them abroad. So the steam engine was invented, or improved, excuse me, by James Watt in 1776, and it existed before that, but his designs made it valuable for daily use in coal mining. Um, and that turned out to be a big deal because, as you can see, there's lots of different ways to mine coal. But once you've cleared out all these ones that you can get to from the side and from the top, you have to start digging down. And when you dig down, you start to hit water. And when you hit water, you have to stop. Unless you have a steam engine, because you can pump the water up out of there and get more coal. So they dug coal out of the ground, which they used to power steam engines, which they used to pump water out, which then they used to dig further down and get more coal. And then that just feeds back on itself in a cycle. So here's some other inventions. The spinning jenny was invented by James Hargreaves. You can see that here. Um, and that's used to spin wool up quickly uh, into thread that you can use to make clothes. And they did it quickly with few people working on it. The cotton gin, same thing. It is an easier way to get the seeds out of cotton so that then you can make it into thread and you can have this excellent, very quickly produced cotton. Um, Henry Bessemer invented the steel process where he made really high quality steel by uh, using air injection and a number of other techniques uh, to create this steel in ways that hadn't been done before, using the iron and coal and stuff that they had from the Industrial Revolution. Here's some medical advances. It's smallpox vaccine by Edward Jenner, and that killed smallpox, eventually totally died out um, in the 20th century. But that also allowed people to live a lot longer and allowed infants and young children to live longer which led to a population increase. And same thing, bacteria. The discovery of bacteria by Louis Pasteur allowed for pasteurization and a number of other techniques that cut down on the number of people dying from infectious disease, and that was a big deal, and that allowed more population increase. So the food production plus the medical advances, population explosion. So here's the feedback loop. This is what I mean by this. Follow me on this line of thought. New technology led to more food, which led to increased population, which led to urbanization, 
which then led to increased education because you have more people in one place. It's easier to educate them, and there were pushes to educate people during this time period. So that increased education leads back here to new technology because the newly educated people can handle more complex jobs, and also are, there are more people educated and capable of working on these new technological improvements. So that new technology leads to education, which leads back. New technology also led to more power to run machines, which led to more finished goods and better transportation. And better transportation led to larger markets. You could send goods and services much longer distances and a uh, larger labor force. And those goods and the larger markets led to an increased standard of living for people in those markets because the finished goods were cheaper. So you can go right from new technology to increase standards of living and new technology to increase education. But also pollution was produced. But in the end, there was this growth of the middle class, which changed the whole way the economy worked. Now, here's how the revolution spread. England was the cradle of the revolution, but it really it hit all the United Kingdom as part of that process. You can see the industrialized areas in white. And then it spread to the orange countries called Western Europe. And then it spread to Eastern Europe and the Nordic countries up there. And then it's finally, eventually, kind of, spread to the green countries here, um, who were only weakly industrialized by the late 1800s. But also, after industrializing in Western Europe, the United States picked it up too, but you don't really get to see that on this map. And that's all for this video.